Welcome back to the Bold Life Movement Podcast. This is a special Bali episode, and I'm so grateful because I have my dear friend Grant Kellogg here with me. Uh, we call him the Cacao King because he has been leading cacao ceremonies all over Southeast Asia the past couple months and in Miami. And it's a passion that he's really spreading to the world, and I wanted to share this with you. And just, I'm so excited to share you with my audience. So grateful being here. Thank you for having me, a part of the Bold Life Movement. My cacao ceremonies are definitely bold and unique and out there, so it's very appropriate being on this show, so super grateful to be here. Yay. So as a disclaimer, we are in Bali, Indonesia. We're here at this amazing villa that we've been renting with some friends. We call it the Cacao Villa, and Ooh. what that means is that you may hear some Southeast Asia background noise, and we're just going to roll with it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So one of the reasons that I really wanted to bring Grant onto the show is because he is a perfect example of what can happen when you follow a curiosity, let it develop into a passion through hard work and some commitment and some consistency, and then incredible opportunities come into your path. And so I wanted to take us back a little bit, Grant. Tell us first what got you into cacao and for people who aren't familiar, like what is a cacao ceremony? Mm, that's a great question. I love answering this. So I originally became super obsessed with chocolate okay. when my cousin Chris Kelly, when I would have sleepovers at his house when I visited them in California, he would always sneak me Hershey bars. Uh, now I don't eat Hershey bars, but back then I would just get so excited. It meant the world um, to me that he, he was like, 17, 18, and I was like, you know, like six, seven years old. So having my big cousin bring me those chocolate bars as a kid mm -hmm. really sparked that passion. And how I got into cacao was my first time when I came here to Bali. I was walking around the yoga barn and I saw this poster with this delicious cup of hot chocolate, essentially. And it just caught my eye. It looked so delicious, so grounding, so earthy, and so flavorful. And I knew I had to get my hands on one of those drinks. And so my first, what brought me to my first cacao ceremony was just um, the delicious cup of cacao that yeah, Seeing a picture of it at me. the yoga barn. Exactly. So what is the difference for people listening who aren't aware between cacao and hot chocolate? Mm, definitely. So hot chocolate is usually added with milk and sugar and it's typically not vegan hot chocolate. Essentially it could be vegan. Um, but throughout, but usually not, usually, usually yeah. not, um, cacao is a fruit and they take the, the seed of the cacao and it goes through this fermentation process. It goes through, um, like seven days of drying in the sun. And then you break it down into cacao nibs, which then goes into cacao paste. And from that, which that's what we use for our ceremonies mm -hmm. and what makes ceremonial gray cacao cacao is that it's blessed throughout the entire process. Oh, wow. And so when we make our cacao, we sing to it, we dance with it, we like, you put know, use Palo vibes, Santo, just it. put all the good vibes up around the cacao. Um, so that's the difference between just like, you know, chocolate to cacao yeah. to ceremonial gray cacao. It's infused with love, which is the main ingredient. Um, but once you have that cacao paste, you then can extract either the coconut butter from the cacao paste, which contains like most of the nutrients. Cacao butter or coconut C butter? Cacao butter. Cacao butter. And then what also is it, um, what is left behind is the cacao powder, okay. which isn't as dense in nutrients, um, but it's absolutely delicious. And that's what a lot of people use mm. for, you know, hot chocolate mixes and things like that. They take that cacao powder and then mix in different sugars and maybe milk powder and things like that to use for hot chocolate. Love it. So I remember my first cacao ceremony was at a women's retreat that I attended in Costa Rica. And I had never heard of this concept. I mean, I love chocolate, who doesn't? But I remember feeling so lighthearted and mm. so in my femininity, really. 
And there was just something very ceremonial about this, uh, this ritual that we were being led through. And so I want to know what about that first cacao ceremony at the yoga barn led mm. you to want to host your own, led you to become um, somewhat obsessed with this process? Mm. So it was my first cacao ceremony with my cacao teachers and dear friends, Ayla and Asiera. Mm. They create these very soulful cacao ceremonies where they encourage everybody to use their voice. And it was mid-ceremony, and they asked, who in the room has something to share? Mm. And so I stood up right away and was like, I do! <laughs> and just kept going and flowing and singing and rapping and just didn't stop. And it just I was really stepping into my power. And I just needed that opportunity yeah. from someone to be granted permission to step into my power. So... After going to Tony Robbins seminars and, and traveling the met. world, exactly, so thankful for the Tony community, mm -hmm. I just needed that opportunity to step into that power and to start inspiring people yeah. and to holding space. And so I just felt that this was my calling of how I can bring people together. And during that time, I was also studying as a yoga teacher. So I was like, just super stoked on bringing all these, these skills and everything everything together but the thing that really inspired me about the that cacao ceremony and that magical moment in particular was not only that I was be able to step into my power but seeing everyone else in this teacher training in this community stepping into their power so ever since then all my cacao ceremonies I've truly encouraged everyone to share a song or mm -hmm. share a final om or share some light stretching and yoga or share whatever uh, their medicine is so that we can come together as a community and really help each other rise. Yeah, I love that. I think that this is something we often overlook as adults is these vehicles for getting our creativity out there, these potential platforms for stepping up as a leader, stepping up and, and letting your voice come out. We don't realize how valuable that is. So many, so many of us spend so much of the day behind the computer mm -hmm. that we literally don't even hear our own voice until you know we take a phone call or we have to like go into a meeting or something. So I think that having the opportunity to use your voice in like a playful, non-structured, somewhat spontaneous way can be a beautiful challenge for a lot of people. Definitely, and I have a something for all of you to just quickly meditate on. Think of, think of a moment in your life that someone like suppressed your voice. Mm. Whether it was, I mean, even for me, I love my mom so much, but when I was a kid, my, my singing voice wasn't very strong. Was and cold? yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was singing in the car and uh, she told me to stop singing mm. because it just didn't sound good. But it was also in a time where she was like talking on the phone, doing business and everything. So it wasn't the time and place to be singing anyways. Okay. Like, Justin Bieber or whatever I was saying. But, um, you know, there's all those moments where people in, in our life, uh, whether it's, it's probably unconscious, but they're like, hey, you know, stop speaking or don't be so loud or use your inside voice. But I'm here to create that space so we can kind of break out of those, those that conditioning and, and, you know, allow ourselves to use our voice and allow ourselves to yell and to, to scream and to dance and to sing and to rap and to flow and just let whatever is in, in our hearts yeah. come through. Yeah. To the world. Yeah. So I want to spend just a little bit more time talking about what makes up a cacao ceremony and, mm -hmm. and how you can customize them. And then I want to dive into what your life has become because of cacao, mm. which for you listening could be something else, the proverbial cacao, that passion that you just go after. So uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about a cacao ceremony is that it can be unique to each facilitator. Mm -hmm. I've held one on my women's retreats and you know, it's completely different than the way that you do it because I don't play an instrument yet mm -hmm. and uh, it was a little bit more feminine whereas yours has done a, one of them that I've been to, did a great job of combining feminine and masculine so that both parts of ourselves could be heard. So I would love for you to break down what key components you always try and include in a mm. ceremony and what are some different ways that you can mix it up and customize it. Mm. Amazing. So definitely starting with finding yourself in a beautiful state when you're preparing 
for the cacao, you're creating the cacao elixir. Um, sometimes when I was back in the States and I would have a cacao ceremony at, at 7 p.m. and all of a sudden it's 5.45 and I got to get catch an Uber there and I'd start making the cacao and I'm like, hold up, hold up. I need to like center mm. because this is the energy that I'm putting into this cacao ceremony elixir is going to be consumed by everyone and they're going to be able to feel this energy. Mm -hmm. So first of all, it's just like tapping in to center yourself and align yourself with why you're hosting a cacao ceremony. They can be super fun. They can be filled with ecstatic dance, movement, community, but really tapping into your why and why you're bringing the people together. And I like the word that you say customized because mm -hmm. every cacao ceremony, even every one that I facilitated has been like completely different. Totally Everyone different. Is, is the same. The one you went to last Thursday will be completely different than the one tonight. And so I kind of just tap into who's coming, why do I feel called to, sh to, mm -hmm. to bring these people together? Mm -hmm. And the next thing is, is setting the sacred space mm -hmm. is really creating a space, whether it's through mandalas or through its um, meditation cushions or its music or incense or Palo Santo or candles or light, just setting that space. So as people enter, they're, they're starting to, to drop in, energetically drop in. And we're going into a ceremony. We're going into a trans transformational process. Mm. So getting, getting people into, into that, that energy and then I think it, it just comes down to like sharing what you know and sharing what's inside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, this, this quote inspired me as I started to start um, sharing more of my music is, is don't die with the music inside. Mm -hmm. And so every single day there's new inspiration and creativity and things that are like coming into me. And so I just show up the way that I am. As you, as you said, as we began this interview, she's like, there's great energy already, but just be yourself, show up as you are in this moment. And that's all you got to do is whether it's your, your students, your, your clients, your family, your relationships, just show up as you are transparent, real, raw, just like the cacao as you are. And it will go just this is perfect. Meant to. Yeah. Exactly. One of my favorite ceremonies that I've been to that Grant led was just he and his best friend Eric Breezy, which we'll give a shout out to in the Breezy. podcast because he has um, been the cacao chef for so many of the ceremonies here in, in Bali. So it was Grant, Eric, and then our dear friend Dan. And it was just the four of us in Chenggu, a much smaller, more nurturing cacao ceremony. And for Grant, every day is a cacao ceremony. It's something that, that he says all the time. It's catching on. But, but for me, I hadn't. I hadn't been privy to that that ritual on such a consistent basis. So that more peaceful, more nurturing, more nourishing ceremony in contrast with the wild, incredible, yeah. loud, ecstatic one that we had last week is a perfect example of how they can vary and mm. how you can take something like a cacao ceremony and and make it your own and make it what is needed for the people in your life or in your professional relationships or what, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love that. Mm. Uh, Thank you. Hmm, I could talk about cacao all day. Uh, another way that, that they've spiced up the, the different rituals is customizing the flavor of the cacao. Do you mm -hmm. want to speak to that at all before we move on? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so when you're making a cacao ceremony drink, Getting raw organic cacao paste is the way to go. Um, Where can if they get that? You can get that you, if you're in Bali, if you have that luxury of being in Bali. In Bali uh, you can get that u Uba Ra or um, Elevated Cacao. If you're in America, you can order cacao paste online from keescacao.com. Maybe we can put that in the bio or something. For sure. Um, or just Amazon, search ceremonial gray cacao paste. Um, if not, you can use like Nutivo, I believe, cacao powder, um, which isn't as, uh, and then you can add like cacao butter into that if you want that thick ceremonial like taste and feeling. Really can feel that cacao spirit like coming coming down your, your body. But truly, it's all about the intention and the love that you put into it. So you could even have a water ceremony or a kombucha ceremony yeah and have the same thing or a turmeric latte or a chai latte. Tea, coffee. Tea. I mean, these are, these are rituals that people have because 
it makes them feel differently in their body and there's mm -hmm. something magical about the ritual aspect. 100%. 100%. It's important in some sense, as we've been experimenting with different flavors such as vanilla to peanut butter to caramel. And then also just like, we're also just working on a super thick raw ceremony of gray cacao with just coconut milk, water, a little bit of water and cacao paste and maybe a little bit of coconut sugar or cayenne or something for a little, little kick. But other than that, just keeping it keeping it real, keeping keeping it simple. I love it. This bee can hear that we're talking about the sweet goodness. Oh, <laughs> yes. decided to join the interview. Hello. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so one thing that I've definitely noticed is that cacao is a heart opener. Grant's heart is extremely open. Mm. And one of the benefits that I've seen that bring him is awesome opportunities. I can't even tell you how many incredible people have come into this guy's life in the past couple of months simply because he's living out his dream. And I wanted to give you a chance to just sort of explain the evolution from your first cacao ceremony where you were like, let's see how this goes, to literally being in a cacao documentary as of a week ago. It's, it's insane what's been mm. manifested here. So I just wanted to let you speak about that for a moment. Wow, it's, it's really humbling reflecting on um, how far I've come with um, just who I am and this craft that I've been working on. Um, I think it just comes down to committing to something, whether it's like whatever is like that spark inside. When I started, stop, like stopping my career in user interface and user experience design, everyone thought I was crazy mm -hmm. to start following these, this passion of like being in Miami and doing cacao ceremonies slash like chocolate parties and like yoga, art, cacao gatherings and all these things that were starting to be created. It was, it was, it was really weird to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew it was right because it was something that I wanted. So I cr started creating something that I was searching for. Mm -hmm. And so once I found that thing that I wanted to create for myself, I knew that there was other people like myself that would like a similar experience. So I just started creating them yeah. and finding that courage within. Uh, and it took a lot of courage because there was definitely a lot of fear. Is nobody gonna come? Is the ticket price right? Do I even charge? Do I, what, what, how do I even do this? I'm, I'm a beginner. Um, but just finding that courage and saying yes and going for it. And what gave me a lot of a lot of faith and momentum is that I've learned from so many other people. I like to believe that my ceremonies have a specific flavor and uniqueness, just as your yoga class or your podcast or everything is all unique because we're all so different as we're also the same. But I just committed to like showing up to Levi Banner's cacao ceremonies, Ela Nasieras, Akasha's, uh, the ones all around the world, LA at the Tribal Markers Oasis, mm -hmm. at to um, in San Francisco, everywhere I would go, I would just immerse myself as well as going to different seminars to seeing how people hold space and to how they facilitate and going to other yoga classes and just being aware of how do they open the space? How do they close the space? What were the things, the mantras, the things they shared in between? So I've just been consuming wisdom and information from all these people, including including Kim here. I've learned so much from all these amazing people. And um, what has helped the evolution of the cacao ceremonies is always being open. And I'm open, thankfully, because I drink a lot of cacao, <laughs> to receiving honest feedback yeah. from the people. And I ask them, typically at the end of the ceremony, sometimes in the group or sometimes I just go up to my friends after and um, say, hey, what do you think I did well and where's an opportunity for growth? Um, because I know that these experiences are something that I want to continue to create. I'm hosting retreats and ceremonies all around the world. My next one starts this weekend in the Philippines and Cebu. And so I'm just um, dedicated, I'm dedicated mm -hmm. to this. And it's through that dedication and that passion uh, and just openness to continue to learn about facilitating epic transformational experiences where people leave inspired, activated, and connected to very 
profound individuals with a sense of purpose and seeking that purpose and living that purpose so that we can raise this vibration and the love and the freedom on this planet. Mm. So what I'm hearing is that you had a curiosity about something mm -hmm. and so you decided to start putting yourself around other people who were experts at this field, cow ceremonies, and then you started hosting your own despite the fear that inevitably came up mm -hmm. and then you consistently did it over and over and over to improve and I love the banging that's happening in the background it's so volley right now hey 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 hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> yeah yes. so this is why I love this guy mm. so consistently hosting your own ceremonies and being open to feedback so being open to improvement and not having to have it completely correct the first time around mm -hmm. and closing off to um, to pivoting, to trying it a different way, mm -hmm. to changing what was and wasn't resonating with the audience. So if you're creating a business, this is where a beta test comes in. You don't need to launch a full blown course because you're super passionate about it because the reality is you might be putting way too much work into something that people don't want to buy. So start trickling things out, start hosting your yoga classes like we talked about and getting feedback and seeing what isn't isn't working. And then what I what I also took from what you said is that the passion compounded. And as the passion compounded and the skills improved, you became even more excited and had even more momentum about the stream. And I see this time and time again with my clients and in my own life. It's like a curiosity becomes something that you decide to commit to then the passion comes, mm -hmm. then the momentum comes. And once this momentum started building, I mean, I literally just saw the click. Mm. Opportunity after opportunity after mm. opportunity. The Philippines this weekend is with a girl that he, a woman that he met here in Bali, didn't know her a month with ago. You. I know I was there too, she's amazing. <laughs> her name is Kim as well, and she lives in the Philippines. Kim with a Y. Kim with a Y. And she was like, you're incredible at what you do. This needs to come to my home country, my home city. I'm going to give you the space to do it. Come. And now the same thing has happened with this documentary. And it's mm -hmm. like, I just want people to be able to hear that these overnight success stories are not reality. Mm -hmm. You put a lot of freaking hard work into what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't an obsession out the gate. It became that. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else you want to add to that before I like get off my soapbox? Mm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, what's coming to me right now is is it's it's all about collaboration. Mm. Um, you know, like this is a collaboration. Every cacao ceremony is a collaboration. Every person that attends your ceremony, your event, your whatever. Even you right now that is watching this, this is a collaboration because without you, this wouldn't even be happening. Yeah. So um, collaborate with people and allow other people to shine and uh, allow everyone to step because there's room for everyone to succeed. There's mm -hmm. the, right now everything is in, a, is in abundance. Like we can all be financially free. We can all be emotionally happy and strong. We can all live in peace. We all can have epic cacao villas <laughs> and everything and so may all the blessings come to you and to you and to you and to you into this land and to and to everyone um but when i when i first started my ceremonies it totally wasn't this way i i wanted to mostly be in the spotlight but as the process has come and mm -hmm. i have learned through my own cacao ceremonies i have truly surrendered and everything will come back to you 100 percent uh, I believe in karma and positive karma and negative karma and all things. The energy that you embody is is what it goes out into this universe and this universe and this energy, this universal energy is always listening and, and, and seeking and watching the things that you do, the actions that you take. And that's how the universe in what you were saying is having my back right now because yes. I felt this intuitive call, this is what I need to be doing and I committed to it and I said yes. And so the universe has had my back and there has been numerous amounts of challenges. I believe this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. My main focus is the purpose. Value. It's my why. It's bringing value to the people. And if you're watching this, whether you already have a business or you're looking to start a business or start something, is just go for it. Because there's somebody that needs your service, your product, your event, your ceremony, your 
anything they they need it. And so it's selfish if you don't go out there and create it. Yeah, one thing that someone said at the ceremony that we held here last Thursday was the only way to do it is to just do it. Mm, and nice. I was like, wow, drop the mic. Yes. That was so good. <laughs> Nike, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there anything else that you want to share about the tribe that you've been able to create from this? And, mm. and, and I know we were just touching on collaboration, but specifically how how your tribe has evolved mm. and how you have evolved because of uh, just being courageous enough to follow a curiosity. Mm. Yeah, I think your um, your vibe truly attracts your tribe and you're you're not you're only as strong as the people that are with you. Like right now in this cacao villa we're we're living with some like epic content creators and producers and entrepreneurs and like the vibe around here is like every day, it's like, yo, let's do a podcast, yo, let's shoot a video, yo, let's host a ceremony, yo, let's like go to lunch and dinner and have conscious like conversation. I am stronger because of the people that um, that I'm surrounded with. And so it's like, it's right now, this movement is like, let's get back to the village days. Let's get back to the times where we gather around, we use like pure raw medicine from the earth to mm -hmm. upgrade versus like downgrade with other things like substances and alcohol. And so, to kind of backtrack, when I first had this vision of like cacao ceremonies with dance and like at the beginning when some people couldn't really understand what a cacao ceremony was, sometimes I called them chocolate parties and everything is because I was just seeking that gathering with friends yeah. where we could dance and have fun. and Without having to be at a club wasted. Exactly. Without spending $100 and waking up the next day like what happened and this and that. Waking up the next day and feeling my cup full. So your vibe is your tribe. Sure. And so let's get back to the village days. Yeah. And, you know, if you're listening to this and you're not resonating with the words energy or universe or vibe or anything like that, I hope you can extract the simple fact that you don't need to know your passion or your purpose before you can start creating momentum and, and changing your life with like little millimeter shifts mm -hmm. by simply following a curiosity and having the the bravery and the commitment to dive into that and seek out experts and take courses, your life will change. Knowledge changes who you are. And when you change, the people in your life change. And that's, Grant is a perfect example of how that's happened and how he continues to level up. I mean, I cannot wait for you to see this documentary that he's in. Mm. <laughs> From a person he met a week ago, it, yeah. the footage is incredible. And, and it's just so beautiful to watch it unfold in front mm. of my eyes. Um, I knew you before this all even came about, and it's incredible. Mm. In a way, the documentary has come into fruition is that I adopted this philosophy that every day is a cacao ceremony through my times living with Breezy in our apartment in Miami. And every day we would uh, wake up and we would Instagram it as well, and we would, we would bring a cacao ceremony elixir to each other and uh, just really surprise each other in these, like, fun little ways and so we just started every single day we would just like give each other cacao and we would bless it and we would go through our own little meditation or like we would drink it and then do some yoga or play some mantras or songs or do a little dance party in our apartment and just like, every day we like it kept happening and happening and happening and then other friends that lived around us were like hey can we come over for these delicious chai teas and golden milks and cacao elixirs <laughs> and just get lit with you guys off these like potions yeah. exactly and so like the word kind of started getting out and everything and which which helped our um, ceremonies because people saw that every single day we were living this and how to go back to my point of of how the documentary came into manifestation is that we were just living an everyday night at the cacao villa here and our buddy Jonah Kess came over with um, his amazing girlfriend Renee Malone and brought over a call in the creator and we were just doing a cacao ceremony just as we would every single night before dinner and he was just blown away by the energy that we had and immediately felt this call to collaborate with us so we spent this last week also with my boy David Paulman creating from Germany and and Merit Wild Soul we've all just been creating these epic cacao short videos and documentaries and and just sharing, just sharing what we're doing with the world. So just continue to live in your world, live, 
live in that that bubble live in it and just embody it and opportunities will come to you yeah and i think that this is a perfect example of being a product of your product grant is 100 percent like this all the time like mm-hmm. literally the fact that he put a shirt on was <laughs> surprising because yes, only he for just, you guys he just lives like a very free loving open creative existence and by doing that he's been able to pull in incredible people like david and Merritt, who you can't see because they're behind the camera to help him create a movement and that movement for him is cacao for you it might be something else but the principles are the same Mm. create something start something something. and like do it right now like time is ticking and it's never been truly like an easier time to create something right now, just as all the resources we have online and how intelligent everyone is in this day and age. Just like I was telling Kim about this cacao ceremony training, facilitator training that I'm creating. And I just had the idea and I bounced it off her and all of a sudden like, it's like happening now just because she is so brilliant within um, coaching and creating courses and everything. So just, just share your ideas, share your ideas and people will give you that yeah. feedback that you need to, to, to use to, to For move sure. forward. And so one, one story that I really want to share on the air is we were at this incredible spa here in Ubud. It's called Champuan or something like that. I always butcher it. It's this epic, like, hot pool, cold pool, steam room, sauna mm. thing in the side of the mountains. <laughs> and the stone walls are all these animal carvings. It's really beautiful. And so we're just there. It's, like, finally an opportunity for us to have some one-on-one time and catch up. And we, we had this idea for the facilitator training and we're getting really excited and Grant's like, cacao. And, and he's, <laughs> in that moment, he's like, you know, on fire. And he's like, I know someone out there is saying cacao yes. right now. And I talked to a friend the very next day who was at a cacao ceremony an hour away from here in a separate part of Bali. And he told me that he was yelling cacao from the top of the roof and getting everyone at that ceremony to do it because he had come as my guest to one of Grant's like a week or two prior. Mm. And I remember going to Grant the the next day after I'd heard that and I was like, your movement is like literally happening and people are changing how they act because of what you're creating. Mm. And super special and super cool. Thank Mm. you. There's there's always a ripple effect from every action and every decision that you take. And so I just encourage you all to just make more decisions so you can continue to to move forward. And Tony Robbins says progress equals happiness. So that as, as I've been continuing evolving into this craft, into this to this role, I've have, I've have gained more happiness. I've embodied more more freedom. And so every time we gather, just as the cacao ceremony we have tonight, I know that there will be relationships created. I know that there will be positive ripple effects that go out into the world from the energy that they carry on maybe after dinner the the person that they bless or they connect with it's always it's always things are always in motion and things are always in flow yeah so there's always a reaction to what you're doing yes and so if you're listening to this and you're like yeah that sounds great i really want to have this progress i really want to feel excited about something but you're sort of stuck and you don't really know what your thing is or maybe you do but you just don't know how to take action on it or you feel isolated in your town because no one else is into what you're into then i really encourage you to check out my free training in it i talk about the exact same principles that grant has used to go from amateur cacao attendee to the cacao king who is in a documentary and and i explain how i went from completely miserable at my corporate job my nine to five working 14 hours a day, driving an hour to and from work, to living all over Southeast Asia and Europe and holding a TEDx talk and writing a book and just feeling so much more in alignment with who I am, I walk you through all of those steps and I help you create a plan. So don't feel like you're a million steps behind if you don't know your passion or your purpose because uh, you don't need to know it yet, that comes later. And so if you're interested, that's theboldlifemovement.com slash free dash training and we'll definitely have that linked up in the show notes as well Mm. grant i'm so grateful for your presence and to merit and to david for helping create this opportunity today we love our tribe and Uh, thank you for being here thank you for having me and the last thing i want to finish on is if you can think it you can do it so Mm. whatever's inside whatever you want to go create 
Go do it. Yeah. Kick out! Oh, beautiful. Just love it all over my love. love.